Gone are the days of the discreet GPU. For a new hero has emerged. Video cards tremor in fear as the new budget king is finally here. The dark army of Intel and NVIDIA have no chance, for AMD's APU is here at last. Alright Vader, enough of that. Throw the intro. Hey guys, welcome back to Tech215. I'm your host, Nick, and in today's video, we are going to take a look at the Ryzen 3 3200G, and although this chip came out about eight months ago, there is no new news from AMD about a 4000 series launch, so we're going to take a look at the Ryzen 3 3200G to see if it's still a decent option for budget gaming in 2020. So in case you guys don't know this already, the Ryzen 3 3200G is one of AMD's APUs, which means it has a CPU and a GPU all in one, so you don't need a graphics card. But we're gonna be running the usual synthetic benchmarks like Unigen Heaven and Cinebench R15 so that we can compare this to some other budget options that are already out there. I tested a lot of esports titles because I feel like that's what this chip is really made for. Games like CSGO, Rocket League, Fortnite, and I also threw in Apex Legends to show you guys what this chip is capable of and what this chip actually struggles with. Alright guys, with all that out of the way, let's take a closer look at the Ryzen 3 3200G, run some benchmarks, and then I'm going to give you guys an alternate option at the same price point that's just miles better. Let's get into it. The Ryzen 3 3200G is AMD's latest APU that features a four core, four threaded CPU on the AM4 platform and is based on the 12 nanometer architecture, better known as Zen Plus. The 3200G has a base clock speed of 3.6 gigahertz and can turbo all the way up to four gigahertz that AMD is calling Precision Boost Overdrive. It also features 4 megabytes of level 3 cache, supports DDR4 memory, and has a total TDP of 65 watts. On the graphics side of things, the 3200G features a Radeon RX Vega 8 graphics, and when compared to something like the integrated graphics on a high-end i5 or i7, this is simply brilliant. The Vega 8 die features 8 processing units and has the ability to be overclocked all the way up to 1800 MHz. It also offers HDMI and DisplayPort support depending on your motherboard. Since this chip doesn't offer any VRAM, it utilizes your machine's system memory and can be configured all the way up to 2GB. AMD packs all these features into one offering for an MSRP of $99. Something like this has never been offered by Team Blue. On our test bench today, we'll be using 16 gigabytes of G-Skills Trident Z RGB, clocked at 3000 megahertz, a Corsair MP510 NVMe Express SSD, and since we're overclocking this APU, I decided to use the Wraith Prism Cooler for some extra cooling performance, and it's all sitting on the B450 ORSM motherboard from Gigabyte. Cinebench R15, the 4-core APU scored a 554 with an open GL score of 61 FPS, oddly both at 720 and 1080p. In Unigen Heaven with the settings set on low, at 720p we got a score of 2225 and an average FPS of 88. But when we switched to 1080p low settings, we saw the APU drop to a score of 1281 with an average FPS of 52. Now let's look at some games, and first up, we have Fortnite, where the AMD APU played really smooth the whole time through. At 720p low settings with epic view distance, we saw an average FPS of 113, and at 1080p, we got an incremental dip of 105. CSGO is next, and without a doubt, this game played the smoothest of all four games tested today. At 720p low settings, we saw an average FPS of 111, 
and when we bumped it up to 1080p we saw it dip down to 81 FPS. Moving on to Rocket League and we got the highest frame rates of the day clocking 147 FPS at 720p and we saw a dip at 1080p but only down to 132 FPS. But now we move on to something a bit more challenging and that's Apex Legends. The quad core APU maintained a playable 43 FPS at 720p but took a huge dip at 1080p where it could only muster 24 FPS. It was still playable but was quite a choppy ride to say the least. Guys, okay, so that was a closer look at the Ryzen 3 3200G. So now it's time to give you guys some positives and negatives when purchasing one of these fine APUs. Positive number one, you get a CPU, a GPU, and a decent cooler for a hundred bucks. It's gonna play some of your favorite games at low details at 720p, all your favorite esports titles, and some AAA titles at console-like frame rates. Number two, you have an awesome upgrade path, so down the road if you do want to upgrade, you have the motherboard, you have the memory, you're good to go. Just upgrade to a better chip, and along you go. Number three, if you're building something like a small form factor build, like a home theater PC, or you want something just to browse the web, play some games here and there, or run Microsoft Office, this chip will perform exceptionally well. But now let's talk about some of the negatives I experienced with this chip. And at the end, I'm gonna give you guys an alternate option, which just absolutely blows away the Ryzen 3 3200G. For starters, if you don't have a 3000 series Ryzen motherboard, you may have to perform a BIOS update. So a lot of the older A320 motherboards, B350, B450, may not have that already installed. It's a simple solution, but if you don't have another first gen Ryzen chip on hand, you may have to borrow one from AMD, and I think it's great that they're doing it, but it can be a real pain in the butt. When I first got this chip, I had my Gigabyte Aorus motherboard already updated to the latest BIOS, and when I put the chip in and booted it up, it would not boot with my 32 gigabytes of Trident Z Neo. I wanted to run this chip as fast as possible to show you guys what it's capable of, but it simply would not boot. After hours of troubleshooting, I changed the memory out to my older set of Trident Z RGB memory, and it booted right up with no problems at all. Just be warned guys, if you don't see that sticker that says 3000 series ready, you may have to do a BIOS update to get your chip working, and you may have to call AMD to borrow one of their loaner Athlon APUs. Second on the list, for as good as it is as an APU, I felt like this chip didn't perform as well as other YouTubers out there that have tested this chip before. And I even had my chip overclocked, my memory was set to 3000 megahertz in dual channel, and I also overclocked it a little bit with a better cooler. So I'm not sure why I wasn't seeing the results that some other YouTubers were seeing. It could be that the chip wasn't bin very well and I lost the silicone lottery. I wasn't really that impressed. It felt like I was playing a PlayStation 4 game on a PlayStation 3, if that makes sense to you guys. The thing I really don't like about this is that you're not gonna be able to play your games on anything more than low settings. Everything I ran, including Unigine in Heaven, had to be cut down to low settings to avoid choppiness. In terms of an APU, I think it performed very well for what it is in its own niche market. And chips from Intel like the high-end i5s and i7s with integrated graphics don't even come close to performing as well as this chip does in terms of gaming. So that is definitely a plus for AMD. Let me give you guys an alternate option at around $100, $120 price point for both the Ryzen 5 1600 AF and the Ryzen 3 3200G. No matter what, you're gonna have to have an AM4 motherboard and DDR4 memory. So regardless, you still have to purchase those two things in order for this setup to work. 1600 AF, in terms of CPU power, is light years better. And in fact, it's $15 cheaper. In terms of raw CPU performance with the Ryzen 5 1600 AF, you're going to get 6 true cores with 12 threads, a 3.2 GHz base clock, and an overclocks up to 3.6 GHz using the Precision Boost Overdrive. Pair that with something like my GTX 750 Ti, and you're going to have 
way better gains in terms of CPU horsepower, and you're gonna have much better graphics. You're actually gonna be able to play these games at high settings. And then down the road, when it's time to upgrade, you won't have to upgrade your CPU and your GPU, you'll just have to upgrade your GPU. For $100, you have an APU all-in-one decent 720p gaming machine, or for $130, you have a really nice gaming machine. You'll be able to play your games at 1080p high settings, at least for eSports titles, and then for the more AAA titles, you'll be able to play 1080p low to medium settings. I actually looked at the numbers, and the Ryzen 3 3200G performs as well as a GTX 550 Ti. GPU from almost 10 years ago. While I do think it's great for integrated graphics, I simply cannot recommend you go out and buy a Ryzen 3 3200G if you plan on making it your main gaming rig. That does it for me guys. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I really appreciate all the support I've gotten lately. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Ring that bell so you don't miss a thing. And you can also find me on Instagram at tech underscore 215 underscore. I'm on there all the time posting things related to the channel and all things PC tech and hardware related. I absolutely love it. So I hope you guys follow me on there and I'll absolutely give you a follow back. But I should be back in about a week with more tech content. See ya! Oh, 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 oh,